Today in Luther's Kitchen, we're making pico de gallo. To start with, I'm cutting a rather large red onion. I'm clearly not gonna use all of that, but it's important to always cut the ends off first. I think of it as a globe, so I'm cutting the north and the south pole, and then I'm gonna cut not along the equator, um, but a prime meridian line, so from north to south, and then carefully peel back the first layer of skin without wasting half of the onion and taking too many layers off. I'm only gonna use half of this, uh, half, so quarter, and the first thing is to cut lines all the way through, but not to the complete end, otherwise that chunk of onion is gonna fall apart. So I'm basically trying to make a grid and then keeping my fingers curved, I'm now gonna take my knife and cut across so that I can get small pieces of onion. This way I don't have to do too much chopping after to get the pieces even smaller. I always think that to have big chunky onion and tomato in a pico de gallo is not attractive. That's just my thing. So I wanna make sure my pico de gallo has vegetables that are chopped very small, but also not hacked, because then they look untidy. So after you get your small pieces, run your knife back and forth so that you can really get that onion chopped fine. And put that in a medium-sized mixing bowl. Now we're gonna cut the tomatoes, and you can use either uh, tomatoes on the vine or um, Roma tomatoes. I think the big beefsteak tomatoes don't have as much flavor or juice, but anyway, any kind of tomato would work. I like to cut slices and then take each slice and make a grid so that I can get small pieces. Again, I don't wanna hack the tomato too much because then it's gonna fall apart. And I like to use all the tomato, even the top, so I'm gonna cut away from where the stem was and then just discard that very center piece, but cut around it so I can use that part of the tomato as well. So again, I'm just now taking each slice and I'm cutting skinny strips and then I'm gonna turn that around so that I can cut across to get tiny pieces. And it really helps to have a very sharp knife when you're cutting tomatoes. You need something that's sharp so it'll pierce through the very slick skin. After you've put those tomatoes in a bowl, you wanna get a lime and cut it in half. And using a juicer, you wanna extract the juice from the lime. I have cilantro that I've already rinsed and dried really well. It's really important to dry your herbs because if you cut wet herbs, they're gonna turn black and mushy. And I just took a handful and I literally twisted and squeezed and pulled it away from that large bunch. Now I'm just gathering it and then I'm gonna cut across. Careful not to cut my fingers, but I want to make sure that the cilantro is finely chopped. Then you're gonna add that to the bowl with the tomatoes, the lime juice, and onion. I like to add a clove of garlic, not super traditional in a pico de gallo, but I like it. So I'm taking a small clove of garlic and I'm going to mince, finally, finally chop this clove of garlic. Nobody wants a piece of large raw garlic in their pico de gallo. For the last finishing touches, I like to add some olive oil. Again, not very traditional, but again, I like it. A little freshly ground black pepper, and of course, kosher salt. These two are to taste, so you're really gonna have to mix everything well, and then give it a taste. See if you've got enough salt or lime juice. It may need a little more lime juice. And then once you are satisfied with the taste of that pico de gallo, go ahead and plate it, put it in a nice serving bowl, serve it alongside chips, use it with tacos, put it on top of scrambled eggs. Possibilities are endless. For this recipe and more, visit myclasscancook.com.